sure. So, you know, we're, we're sort of blogging about sort of the influence of money in politics and how, you know, lobbyists basically run Washington right now. Yes, yes. And we want to know is, like, how would you confront this problem of, let's say, lobbyists bundling huge contributions for candidates and then candidates showering them with pork, earmarks, things like that. You know, how would you take on the, the, the influence of these special interests? Well, uh, it's all tied back to the Constitution because if we get those powers that are unconstitutionally being done by the federal government right now back to the states, let's just talk about education, a massive bureaucracy. If we abolish all federal regulations that deal with education, because education is not mentioned in Article 1, Section 8, return that power to the 50 states, then immediately you have just dissected that lobby into 50, okay? And so you, they're 1 50th of the power at each of the state capitals. And so there is no more gravy train. There is no more tens of billions of dollars. Now they're looking at small pieces of the pie, and the, the 50 states can deal with that much more effectively than they can right now, where you've got 535 people so heavily influenced by this lobby money. Okay? So I'm saying get it back to the states, decentralize, you, you wipe out the influence of the lobby on one body. Now, because now you've got the U.S. Congress that these people are lobbying, correct? 535 people. Well, then you've got 50 states and their state reps and their state senators. These people are so deluded, they won't stand near the chance of having that undue influence like they do right now. That's just one example. Yeah, it's interesting you bring up the Department of Education because one thing that's been happening is a lot of people in the Department of Education, they, they put in these new mandates about federal testing, so on and so forth, and then they leave the government and they go and work for, for a testing company. There you go. Right? Influence peddling. So what would you do? Do you think that we need more sort of laws saying that you can't leave the government and go work for a lobby shop to go, you know, argue for more more of these regulations? I the especially government? favor that when it comes to members of Congress. Right. Yes, those are, I mean, any kind of reform like that I believe is good yeah, because and, of and the what sort of specific laws do you think that we could pass that could stop that? Like maybe saying members of Congress are banned for a certain period of time or just banned yeah, for a lifetime. Yeah, I think banned for 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. They should have a 10-year ban from doing any type of lobbying. Not, I mean, that's not an original thought of mine. In fact, one of my opponents early on proposed that type of rule, and I said, you know, I would happily sponsor that if I'm the one that wins and you lose. Yeah, excellent. You know, because it's just, it's, it's a, like with the EPA, mm -hmm. okay, that's unconstitutional. I'm all about clean air and clean water, but right. we've got 50 states all have smart people that can right. make sure those things happen. But as you have it right now, the EPA, I view, is the biggest job-killing entity mm -hmm. on the face of the earth. Let the states handle that, and then the states can compete against one another with regard to labor issues as well. I favor getting rid of OSHA and the National Labor Relations Board. They are unconstitutional. The word labor and occupation is not in the Constitution. Those powers belong to the states. And when the states compete, good things happen. You may remember a couple of years ago when Illinois raised their personal income tax, 66%. They did the same thing to their state corporate tax. And guess what? Within a matter of days, other states such as Wisconsin were saying, hey, bring your business to Wisconsin. We won't tax you near as much. It's interesting you brought up the, the EPA. I mean, obviously, a lot of conservatives have been following, like, Solyndra and what happened there. There was a lot of revolving door there. There were a lot of people who had close ties to the Obama administration to get those sort of grants and loans. I think one thing really interesting that happened is when Fannie and Freddie were sort of bailed out in 2008, some of the Republicans, they demanded this, and they passed into law a new law that said that Fannie and Freddie can't lobby the federal government because they're getting all this money. Why should they use our, our money to lobby the government again, right? Do you think that we should be doing that for, you know, all sorts of companies that get taxpayer subsidies? Like, why should GM or AIG or Goldman Sachs be able to lobby the government with our money? Do you think you favor, like, a new ban on companies that are getting these huge subsidies from lobbying? Well, you've been reading my notes, but the main thing I favor is ending all subsidies. You know, I'm a small businessman. When I have a bad month, I can't pick up the phone and call 1-800-PLEASE-SEND-ME-A-CHECK. Right. I have to work it out, okay? And this crony capitalism where the government is choosing winners and losers is wrong. It encourages irresponsible behavior because these big firms say, you know, let's just roll the dice. Yeah, this may not be a, a good thing that we should do. It's pretty risky, but, you know, hey, we got the government that will bail us out if we right. mess up, you know? That has got to stop. The Constitution uses the word bankruptcy. When a company has acted irresponsible, then there are consequences. There should be consequences to that. They should be allowed to go bankrupt. And then the firms that have, that have acted wisely right. and in a proper manner can step in and buy up these failed companies, just like that's the way it's supposed to work. It used to work that way until, obviously, four years ago right. when Republicans started off by leading that, oh, well, you know, these people are too big to fail. They are not too big to fail. Let them fail. Then let the frugal, well, 
well-managed companies buy up those assets, let the market take care of it. And all these subsidies, whether it's for ethanol or for Solyndra or for subsidizing flood insurance. I mean, if you want to build a beach house, you get after it. But don't ask me to subsidize your flood insurance, okay? I mean, all subsidies need to be in it because that's that's the fair way to, to reduce government spending. You know, we talk about, oh, we need to cut welfare. We need to quit subsidizing illegitimacy. I agree with that. But let's don't just pick on those people. Let's cut the subsidies for Solyndra, Goldman Sachs, GM, AIG, uh, ethanol grow, uh, uh, producers, you know, which means corn farmers. Let the market dictate. I'm all about alternative energy as long as it can make it on its own. But in the, in the meantime, while we're still working on cutting the subsidies, like, you know, great free marketers like Rand Paul have said that just that companies, why they are getting subsidized, should not be able to lobby the government. Do you, would you agree with I, that? I agree with that. that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. yes. But ultimately, the main goal should be to stop all those subsidies. Right, right. Let those companies fail. Or let them sell something that can make it on its own without having a government subsidy. Right, absolutely. Well, yeah. thank you so much thank for talking to us. Good luck on the race. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.